evening, everyone. If you would, join us in the sanctuary. Find yourself a seat, grab your hymn book, and we're going to stand and sing page number 84. Page number 84, Jesus is Coming Again. Page number 84. Marvelous mentions we bring, glorious carols we services tonight. It's such a blessing to be here. Let's have a word of prayer. We'll get things started. Brother, Brother Daniel, if you would, sir, could you uh, open our service in prayer, please? Father, we thank you for the evening. We thank you that we have time in the middle of the week to come and sit under the preaching of thy word. We ask that we encourage, and encourage us with it and by it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, my brother. Please be seated. Welcome to our services this evening. I do want to remind you, of course, we're having services this Sunday. It's Easter. Looking forward to a wonderful time in the Lord's house this Easter Sunday, uh, Sunday school, morning services at the regular time. So come on out and enjoy the preaching in God's Word. We had a really good uh, turnout and good services last week. We had that uh, musical presentation from the kids and teens and adults too, and it was just fantastic. I want to thank, again, thank everyone who was a part of that. But uh, it's Easter Sunday. Invite some folks to join you. Uh, there is no evening service this Sunday. Just want to remind you of that. But we'll see you back here in the Lord's house on Sunday. I am not 100% sure about the nursing home ministry. I know they canceled it this past week because of sicknesses over the nursing home facility. That's the way it's been the last two weeks. And so uh, if you're involved with that, I'll keep you posted once I hear about it. But uh, uh, for those involved with it, thank you very much for the work that you do there. We have a verse uh, for the month of April. And so, Brother Stephen, if you would, why don't you come on up? We'll go over a memory verse and then another song, and then I get to preach. Thank you, sir. Well, good evening. Go to Philippians chapter 2 with me. Philippians chapter 2. And 
in verses number 1 and 2. And if you're there, if you could read that nice and loud, it says, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Philippians 2, 1 and 2. Anybody been working on that one that thinks they have it done already? Can I go for it? Go for it. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, any fellowship of the Spirit, any bowels of mercy, to fill you my joy, that you be like minded, being of, I mean, of one love, of one, let me see, um, that you be like minded, having the same love, being of One accord. Of, uh, of, what's the last phrase? Um, <laughs> of, of one night. Very good. Got it. You made it. <laughs> Anybody else? Tammy. Therefore, any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill you my joy, that ye be like-minded, having one love, no one. <laughs> Close. I get mixed with the same spot. <laughs> uh, fulfill you my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Good. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Good job, guys. Jeremy? Thank you, Stephen. I, I got to say, I'm impressed. I mean, it's, it's a tough verse this time. So, and you guys did great jumping right away on it. So, thank you very much for that. Um, we went from kind of a peppy song there in the beginning, which we were trying to figure out how to fit it in, Pastor, but I'm not sure how to fit next Tuesday into the words of that song. <laughs> but I know in our church, this. He's coming. He will be coming next Tuesday, apparently, because in our church, that's a long-run thing. Pastor started. It's always, what, is it a week from Tuesday or is it next Tuesday? Next is it next Tuesday? Yeah. All right. So next Tuesday, didn't fit in the song. I was trying to figure out how to make it work for you. But we're going to sing page number 86 now in the garden, a little bit slower this time. Page number 86, if you would stand with me again.
the Christian joy. Hopefully you all received an outline this evening. I do want to direct your attention to the book of Daniel tonight. I want to talk about the resurrection this Sunday, of course, being uh, Easter Sunday. We want to, uh, I want to focus on uh, what the Bible says about the resurrection tonight. And I want to start in the Old Testament uh, just to remind us that, the, uh, that the, the belief in a resurrection is not a New Testament doctrine. Uh, it is something that God had promised to the nation of Israel. And they, had a, they, stood, they have this type of hope also. And even in the days of the Lord Jesus Christ while he was here ministering to people, they had the hope of the resurrection. And so... Daniel chapter 12, if you would please, and we're going to focus on those, uh, look, just read those first two verses. Just remain seated. The Bible says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. Now this is Michael the archangel. There are several archangels, Michael being one, Gabriel another. Lucifer also was an, angel, uh, an archangel, of course, that is the devil. He fell uh, from, uh, from the, uh, his first estate. Uh, and, and so Michael very specifically is mentioned here. He's mentioned in other places in the scriptures, and he's also, of course, mentioned here in the book of Daniel on several occasions, uh, defending the nation of Israel. I shall go on from there, and there shall be a time of trouble. This is a tribulation period, the time of trouble. This is the seven years of tribulation that we read about in the book of Revelation, um, a time of trouble, um, such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered. And that, of course, is talking about the, uh, at the end of the tribulation, the battle of Armageddon, the Lord Jesus Christ returns, uh, and uh, there is a tremendous deliverance of the nation of Israel against the warfare of the, of the Antichrist and all nations against them. And, of course, then at that time, of course, there's going to be an establishment of a kingdom here on this earth by the Lord Jesus Christ for the nation of Israel. Of course, we uh, will also benefit from that kingdom, but this is the promised kingdom for Israel. Uh, Every one that shall be found, um, excuse me, let me, uh, I, I just missed a little section there. Uh, and at that time, thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And we see, we see that book mentioned in the book of Revelation, of course. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Now that's talking about death. That's just a euphemism for people that have died. They shall awake some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Let's have a word of prayer. We'll start right from there. Father, I just want to thank you, Lord, for this uh, time of the year. It's wonderful uh, that we can pause for just a short time and be reminded of the great and wonderful gift that you've given us, and that's eternal life through your Son, Jesus Christ, and that is signed, sealed, and delivered through his death and burial and glorious resurrection And Father, I just pray as we speak about this wonderful truth tonight that you'd encourage us, Lord, and help us to understand the blessed hope that we have of the soon return of Jesus Christ and the bodily resurrection that you promised us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Well, this is an Old Testament doctrine, and that is the resurrection of the dead. It's spoken about here in the book of Daniel, of course. Daniel is a book of prophecy talking about the nation of Israel particularly, but also extending that prophecy uh, for God's complete work in Daniel, particularly Daniel chapter 9. It's kind of like God opens up his day planner and reveals the entire plan all the way up to the last times in in the book of Daniel. And then, of course, the book of Daniel ends with uh, these great statements concerning the resurrection. And I want to particularly point out here as we talk about the resurrection in Daniel chapter 12 uh, that there's two types of folks that are mentioned here. We talk, it talks about, of course, uh, um, some to everlasting life and some to everlasting contempt. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, but you'll, I want to make, just make mention of the fact that everyone will experience the resurrection from the dead. Everyone. The promise of a resurrection is not just extended to believers. Everyone will resurrect from the dead. I do want to remind you that when God created mankind, when God created Adam, he breathed into his nostrils a breath of life. He became a living soul. Everyone that is born has a living soul. That doesn't mean salvation, 
That means that's the eternal part of us. Everyone that is born is born with an eternal portion. In other words, there's, the body, of course, is going to die. But what's inside of everyone that is born will live for all of eternity. And where that, where that place is, of course, is determined uh, upon, uh, by our salvation, our faith in Jesus Christ. So someone who dies without uh, faith in Jesus Christ, they're going to live forever. But they're going to live forever in, uh, in hell and then being cast in the lake of fire. Someone who puts their trust in Jesus Christ is going to live forever. But because of our sins being forgiven uh, through faith in Jesus Christ, we have eternal life and we'll spend all of eternity uh, with God, uh, first of all in heaven and upon this earth during the kingdom, uh, and then uh, in a new heaven and a new earth uh, with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so um, we're reminded of that fact here in this portion of Scripture that as it says, again in verse number 2, it says, And many of them that sleep in the dust of shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And so we see that the resurrection will take place for everyone. I want to direct your attention now to the book of Revelation chapter 20. And we got a lot of scripture to go through. I put it all out here on our outline. And so I'm going to pick up the pace just a little bit. And I want to talk about this great truth of the, re re uh, of the, of the resurrection and found here in Revelation chapter 12. <coughs> Excuse me, Revelation chapter 20. I do beg your pardon. Verse number, verse number 4. And I saw the thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon his forehead or, his, or their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And so these are... These are the, uh, are, are the saints that are coming out of the tribulation, folks that had gotten saved during that period of time. We've talked about that in the past. There will be folks saved during the tribulation. Uh, but the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the end, and then that period. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And I just wanted, the reason I wanted to read that verse of scripture is particularly that phrase that's used there, and that is the first resurrection. As you can see in your outline, I have a particular note there indicating that when it's talking about first resurrection, it's, it's more, it is more about the type of resurrection and not the timing of the resurrection. We're going to talk about a little bit about timing as we get a little bit further down in here, but there are two types of resurrection, and we saw that there in the book of Daniel chapter 12, and we see it here also that there is a resurrection of the tribulation saints, and, and of course they're going to go into the kingdom, but there's going to be after the end of the millennial kingdom, excuse me, yes, after the end of the millennial kingdom, there's going to be another resurrection. And so um, this is the, uh, we have the, the saints of God being resurrected, and then we're going to have uh, the unsaved resurrection. So there are actually two types of resurrections, and not just, not just the timing. And so there are several resurrections. I don't know how many, several years back we did a series on the resurrection, and we listed every time that there are, uh, there's a resurrection mentioned in, in the scriptures. And so uh, there are there's more than one, let's just put it that way. Um, and not just just and unjust, but there's more than one. Um, so well, let's talk about type. Because, you know, the Bible speaks about a resurrection of those that are lost and those that are saved. And, and um, uh, I, I do, I do want to just look at the terms that are mentioned here. Luke chapter 14, if you go there uh, quickly, we see um, the Lord, the, uh, both that, the mention here in Luke 14 and also in John chapter 5, we see in Luke chapter 14, uh, the mentions very specifically, um, let me just get over there. I didn't, I'm preaching from handwritten notes tonight. I don't do that very often, but uh, I was camping. I didn't have my word processor. It's just horrible. It's like, it's like, it's, it's like rustic, you know. I loved every minute of it. Luke chapter 14 and um, 
in verse number 12, it says, uh, then says, Then said he also uh, unto him that bade him, um, When thou makest a, a dinner or a supper, call not thy friends, nor thy brethren, neither thy kinsmen, nor thy rich neighbors, lest they also bid thee again, and a recompense be made thee. But when thou makest a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, that thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee, for thou shalt be recompensed uh, at the resurrection of the just. And, and this is a term that the Lord Jesus Christ uses. He talks about the resurrection of the just. And so we're talking about the folks that are saved. Uh, that word just uh, has to do with our, uh, re our relationship with God. Um, we'll see terms in the scriptures like justified. Um, those type of terms are legal terms. And they have to do with being made right with someone. In other words, there is a um, there is a there's an issue, and it's been resolved, and so our relationship with God has been resolved uh, because of our faith in Jesus Christ. Whatever whatever the whatever the penalty or the or the uh, um, the the cause of division has been removed, and so we're right with God. So you, anytime you see that word just, it's not just talking about the fact that we've justified ourselves by our behavior, it has to do with the, the fixing of a relationship by what Christ has done. But he mentions that here in reference to the resurrection. And so um, what his point is, is that there are things that we are doing here in this earth that we're never going to have any benefit to ourselves from. And he says, it's okay. Because after the resurrection, all those things get worked out. And so our anticipation for the resurrection, um, you know, it's kind of like add, add to the list of great things, right? Uh, not only are we finally delivered from the, 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 this body uh, that we have to deal with and the sinful nature that we have to deal with and all the maladies that we have to deal with and all the trials and struggles in this world that we have to deal with, but... Another thing that we look forward to after the resurrection is, you know, whatever, whatever we've sacrificed here is going to be made up for when we get to heaven. And so, anyway, he just mentions that, but he calls it the resurrection of the just, those that have been made right with God. We've been justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. John chapter 5, if you would, please. And again, we see another term that's used. Again, Jesus Christ speaking here. John chapter 5, verse number 28, if you would please marvel not um, at this. For the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice. Now, please notice there's the word all there, and that's important. Um, and shall come forth, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life. Now, this is talking about us. This is, again, just another term. We're, talking, we're just looking at terms now. Resurrection of the just, resurrection of life. And that's how Jesus Christ describes the resurrection. So we're talking about not just, not just you know, we're now alive again. We're talking about eternal life. We're talking about the fullness of life, which God has promised us through his son, Jesus Christ. It's all complete. Now, that brings us, of course, to the next type, and you'll see that it's the same verse in verse number 20, uh, chapter 5, verse number 29. And they that have done evil, it says, unto the resurrection of damnation. And so, you know, when we talk about resurrection, we're talking about, you know, the body coming forth and being restored with the soul and spirit. And, and of course, those that have done evil, they have not put their faith in Jesus Christ, not been justified, have no forgiveness of sins. Um, that they, what, they're, what they're resurrected to is damnation. Um, when we get over to Revelation chapter 20 again, you're gonna, of course, we're going to see uh, the statements concerning the, the, uh, the great white throne judgment. And, of course, uh, all the small and great, they're going to stand before God. And so it's, it's, they're being resurrected, restored to their bodies, so that they can experience the second death. And uh, that, of course, that's what we read about just a little bit ago in, in uh, Revelation 20, verse number, was that verse number 6? And, and so this, um, you know, if you um, have the resurrection of life, there is, there is no second death. But the resurrection of damnation takes you to the second death. So there's two types of resurrections. 
Um, there, are, there are multiple resurrections that take place, but two types, the resurrection of life and resurrection of damnation. Now, what that is a reminder of is that when someone dies, their destination is already settled. It's done. Because there is no like general resurrection where everybody gets resurrected, they stand before God, and then God sorts it out. That's not how it works. And there are many religions that will teach that. And, and that is, you know, you don't know what's going to happen to you stand before God, and he's going to weigh out your goods and your bads. That's not how the Bible describes it. It is a, it's, it's two types of resurrection. You're either, it's, you're in one category or the other, and that is settled at the time of your death. It, it, it's, you, it's like you have to your last breath, right? And many of you have known folks that have gotten saved on their deathbeds. I, I've met a few, um, and, and that's fine. But the point of it is that nobody knows when their last moment's going to be. And so somebody thinking, oh, I'll just wait till the end and I'll get things settled. Well, that just, you know, boast not thyself of tomorrow. And, and so wherever, wherever you are in your relationship with Christ, when you take your last breath, you will either experience the resurrection of the just or the resurrection of damnation. And there's nothing in the middle there. So we have two types of resurrections and it's based upon a person's relationship to God through Jesus Christ, and that's at the moment of death. Because once you have died, there is no alternative. You can't switch sides. You can't work things out. Um, it's done. It's settled. And so for someone to just think, I'll get it settled later, uh, that you're, a person is fooling themselves. Anyway. Two resurrections, two types of resurrections. If you would, please, let's uh, go over to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. What a great chapter in the Bible. And, of course, 1 Corinthians 15 starts with those glorious words. I'm going to read the first couple of verses, and then we're going to drop all the way down to where we're going to talk about the resurrection. It says in verse number 1, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which you have received, and wherein you stand, by which also you, have, you are saved, if ye keep in uh, memory um, what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He, buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures." And so this great chapter starts off with the declaration of, the, of the, what the gospel is, and that is the, 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 the reality of the death, the burial, and the glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ according to the Scriptures. In other words, this is what God has always planned, and the Lord Jesus Christ came. He, he, uh, this wasn't like plan B. It wasn't like Jesus Christ was going to come here, and they decided to kill him, and that... God had to come up with some, something different to do. This is always according to what God had planned all throughout the Scriptures. The Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world, that Passover Lamb, which is killed and His blood sprinkled so that God would pass over His judgment. This is, this is uh, what God has always done um, for His people. And we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And this is where we stand on the gospel. And, and so the, um, 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 the, the, trans the transition that this scriptures, uh, that the first Corinthians chapter 15 talks about, uh, if you would, if you go to verse number 12, and then we'll, we'll get down to verse number 50 here in just a second here. But getting at verse number 12 and all the way down through the rest of this chapter, is speaking about the resurrection. And so he, he's going to start, uh, Paul, as he's writing to the church in Corinth, he's going to start talking about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ because, you know, there was question about that. 
Um, now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? And so now he begins to talk about some doctrine and begins to work through this great argument concerning the resurrection. And, uh, of course, this first section, of course, is talking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, verse number 20, um, but now is Christ risen from the dead. And, and so um, these are statements that Paul is going to make all throughout the rest. Of, and it's a very long chapter. So he goes into a lot of details about the nature of the resurrection, um, about um, the, this, what takes place. And, and that's what I want to speak about Uh, Drop all the way down, if you would, please, to verse number 50. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Now let's stop there for a second, verse number 51. That is talking about the rapture. Now, he uses the word mystery here, not because it's some kind of, you know, secret Gnostic thing that we've got, he figured out by using some Bible code somewhere, okay? He's talking about the fact that um, um, the, the, the doctrine of the rapture is not something that is dealt with in the Old Testament. Of course, the resurrection is, but the doctrine of the rapture is not. Now, myself personally, the reason I believe that is the case is because those that participate, for the most part, those that participate in the rapture are Gentiles. Because we are living in a day and age when Israel, the the olive branch, has been taken out. Gentile nations have been grafted in. And so at the period of time, Israel is going to be dealt with again. But until that time, Gentiles are. So the doctrine concerning the rapture is primarily directed towards Gentiles. And so that's why you don't see it mentioned in the Old Testament. And so he says very specifically about this mystery, and that's verse number 50, um, excuse me, 51. Now please notice verse number 52. It says, In a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. I'm going to go on, verse number 53. For this this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. Uh, So when corruptible shall be, uh, so when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death uh, is swallowed up in victory. And so, the, the point I want to make is the fact that when we talk about resurrection and when we talk about rapture, there is always a change. We shall all be changed. That is the nature of the resurrection. There is a change that takes place. Um, the body uh, that, is, uh, that has died uh, and buried uh, matter of fact, we were um, we were driving to the campground uh, just the other day, and we you know, I, we don't get up Mammoth Road very often. Um, last time I, I think I drove up Mammoth Road towards New Egypt because I had to go. I, I needed to go to the book garden up there. There's a great used bookstore, and so um, but that's probably the last time I was up that way. So we're driving up that way, and I and I I, I mentioned to Joyce. I said, "Oh, do you remember the folks that lived in this house over here? Where uh, uh, what's that? Uh, what's that? You pull it place." on Mammoth Road. Is that Barclays, I think? You've been there, Denny, haven't you? Is there a you pull it place over there? We're on the right hand side. Yeah, we're on the right hand side. The old cars out front? Yeah, yeah. It's I've been there long. What is it? Blazy. Oh, there you go. Okay. And yeah, I used to go there quite a bit too. Anyway, um, but right across the street from there, there was an older couple that lived there and um, we had, uh, had gotten a phone call. We ministered to those guys. He was in the hospital, almost died, recovered. We ministered to him for a while. He ended up getting saved, which was a great blessing, but he eventually died and uh, preached his funeral, had, you know, things like that. It was wonderful. He had come to Christ very late in life. And, uh, and I just, I'm just, every time we drive down Mammoth Road and I drive past their house, I'm reminded of that. You know, got a phone call from a relative from, I forget, out of state. Can you go visit? 
you know, my, I forget, his brother or something. I said, sure, you know, that's what we do, you know. And, uh, and this fellow ended up getting saved. It was, it was such a blessing. But um, so every time I drive by there, I'm reminded of him. His name is Bobby Gibbs. And, um, um, but Bobby's been dead, I don't know, 10, 15 years now, I guess. Um, but when the resurrection takes place, <laughs> and next time I see him, he won't be some old guy laying in a hospital, you know, wondering if he's going to live to the next day. That's the glorious thing about the resurrection. There is a complete and utter change. And it's a glorious thing. Now, please notice, as we're reading here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul is, is putting two things together. He's talking about this mystery, but he's also talking about the resurrection. And so the, the rapture and the resurrection, uh, and we're going we're to be going over to 1 Thessalonians in a little bit, but the rapture and the resurrection, uh, these, are, these are two things which, which are, are different in their nature, but the outcome is the same. Um, I just want to remind you, you know, the scriptures tell us in the book of Hebrews, you know, um, it is appointed unto the man, it's appointed unto the man once to die, and after this the judgment, right? Every, so we all die. So let me just ask you this, when, when Jesus comes back next Tuesday, and the rapture takes place, um, will you die? So the rapture, although it's... Um, a change that takes place. We don't, we don't often equate it to physical death, but it's the same result. It's as if we die at a moment, at, at the moment of rapture, uh, and our body is completely changed at that same moment. As if we would have died, a, you know, 100 years ago and our bodies are rotted in the grave and just a bunch of ash. Um, it's the same result. And, and so... A physical change will take place at the moment of the resurrection. And this is something that we uh, are promised by God. A, this incorruptible body. Not something that's going to be, you know, it's not like we're going to carry around this thing with us all the time. It's brand new. Now, we can talk about how, you know, what the nature of it is and how we're going to recognize folks and all those type of things. I don't know. We all get name tags when we get to heaven, you know. Hi, my name is, uh, but we're going to know each other. But the nature of the resurrection is a, f a physical change, both, in the, both in during the rapture and the resurrection, uh, and will all change. Now, the timing-wise, and I, I have um, that, for, that verse, uh, in, you're in 1 Corinthians still, so go back to verse number 20. I started reading that just a moment ago. But it says in verse number fi uh, chapter 15, verse number 20, um, but now Christ... Now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them, that's, uh, them that slept. Uh, for since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. And, and um, verse number 23, uh, but every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ and his coming. And so Jesus Christ was the first fruit. He's the first one to be resurrected. He's the first one to have experienced resurrection. So I have a little note down there. So, so if he was first, what about... And we've talked about this before, so I don't, I don't want to just bang on the drum too. Can you think... Who are some folks that came back from the dead in the Old Testament? Can you think of some folks that came back from the dead in the Old Testament? Old Testament. Oh, Old Testament. Well, like the, the child that Elijah, I think, rose back. Yep, exactly. Excellent, excellent. Uh, there was, um, let me see, that was the widow, and she had a son. They were running out of food because of the famine, and I'm going to make these cakes. We're going to eat it, then we're going to die. He makes the promise, and then eventually he ends up sick, and Elijah comes up and lays on him. And um, does he sneeze seven times? I think he sneezes. Yeah, just what a great way to come back to life, sneezing. Um, yeah, excellent. As a matter of fact, I believe that's the first instance of someone coming back to life in the Bible is, is found there. Yes, ma'am. Did you say Elijah? That was Elijah. There was also Elijah. Yes, there was. And I don't remember which one was. Shoot woman. I think that was the widow, wasn't it? 
That was the widow, the, first one. the widow was the first one. The second one was the Shudamite woman. Her and her husband had made that little prophet's chamber. And uh, uh, is it Gehazi? Gehazi uh, had mentioned to Elisha, um, wouldn't it be nice, because they don't have any children, wouldn't it be nice if they had kids? And so he said, by this time next year, you know, when I come through, you'll have a, you know, you'll have a son, basically. And yeah, and, they have, and then a couple of years later, he's out in the field with his dad, my head, my head, and had some kind of aneurysm or something, I don't know, but he dies. And so Elisha shows up, and um, he comes back to life, okay? What a, what a great story. Um, there's another one associated with Elisha. Yes. Um, they were burying someone, and they were kind of strong by like some invaders. Yes, so they were kind of in a hurry. And so they threw the body through where Elisha was buried. Yes. He wrote. Yeah, hit, hit Elisha's bones, came back, yeah, came back to life. <clears throat> and so getting your Elishas and your Elijahs, I do that all the time. Yeah, all right. And so I um, always know that Elijah, yeah. Yeah, because Elijah, J comes before S, and so that's how I always get them right, most of the time. Anyway, so, um, so that, those three instances in the Old Testament. Um, here's the question. And you mentioned, of course, Lazarus, New Testament, okay? Uh, were, uh, were there other people who came back to life in the New Testament? Yeah, that's, a, that's an awesome one. <laughs> that was before the resurrection. That's when he died. And the graves were opened up, and some of the saints came out of the graves. That's creepy. All right. Yes? Dorcas. Dorcas. That's uh, post-resurrection, but yes, Dorcas or Tabitha. And um, uh, the Lord Jesus uh, was going to the city of Nain, and there was a widow woman. Her son died. He, he stops the funeral profession, profession, procession, raises the son from the dead. This is classic stuff, all right? Um, the question being, is that a resurrection? And why isn't it a resurrection? They would die again. And why are they going to die again? And why are they still mortal? That's exactly right. That's exactly right. The ch that change that is spoken about in 1 Corinthians chapter 15... We shall all be changed. That's a big deal. That's not just a little word that's thrown out there. Because people have, and let's face it, we all probably know somebody that has an out-of-body experience and they had died and came back to life. I know folks that that's happened to. Um, so the thing of it is, is that if the, if the soul and spirit is returned to the body and they come back to life, that is, that, all that's doing is coming back to life. That is not the change that is promised us in the resurrection. There is a big difference between coming back to life and being changed. And so the nature of the resurrection requires that change to take place. And that's, that is a big deal. Um, even after the resurrection, um, folks that came back, Tabitha, you mentioned, of course, Paul the Apostle, I believe he was dead and um, that little, uh, the boy that fell out of the second story, second story window, um, listening to Paul preach, um, a Eutychus, um, there's another one. Uh, and so, uh, but these are great examples, but just reminders that um, they, they are just people that came back from the dead, and that is not a resurrection, okay? Um, timing wise, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, if you would please, um, is speaking about that, that's a great portion of scripture. Um, that uh, we have beginning of verse number 13, I would not have you to be ignorant brethren. I, don't, I love commas. I'm glad that comma is there. Um, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. And if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them which, are, uh, which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Of course, there's that euphemistic term again about sleeping. We're talking about death. For this I say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. In other words, we don't all have to die 
before Jesus comes back in order for there to be a resurrection. So it's not like God sitting up there just waiting for every believer to be dead so that he can do a resurrection. That's, that's why we get the rapture. And that's why Paul's talking about it. He's saying, listen, there's going to be another thing that takes place. He doesn't call it the rapture. He calls it catching up. But it doesn't, it doesn't mess up God's plan for the resurrection. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And that's a, that's a resurrection. Now, I want to point out this fact that it says the dead in Christ. That's, import, that's an important statement. As I said earlier about, uh, about, re- about the, um, um, the types of resurrections and not just the timing, yeah, I believe in a t- uh, the uh, two types of resurrection, the just and the unjust, but as far as the timing goes, there are different times that different people are resurrected. Jesus was the first fruit. The next resurrection will be those that have died in Christ. That's what it says, in Christ. So we're talking about what we would call New Testament saints. Our salvation was based on our faith in Jesus Christ and we were saved. And so I know a lot of folks like to say, well, where is the line drawn? Where are the Old Testament saints and the New Testament saints? I don't know where the line's drawn at. I just know I'm a New Testament one. And, you know, we were talking about Lazarus just a little bit ago. You know, Mary and Martha were asked, were, when Jesus spoke to them, and he was comforting them. He said, I know my brother's going to live. He's going to be resurrected in the last day. Her hope for the resurrection was based on the promises made uh, in Daniel chapter 12. So, you know, when it comes right down to it, you know, Lazarus may be an Old Testament saint. And I'm all right with that. I don't think Lazarus is complaining either. Because, you know, he just has to wait another seven years. And when you're in heaven, waiting another seven years is not really a big deal. <laughs> so anyway, those that are, di- I, 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 if I were to die before Jesus comes back, then I, I, I died in Christ. So I'm going to be resurrected during this period of time that's being spoken about right here. Then we which are alive and remain, which could be next Tuesday, shall be caught up. That's where we, you, we use the word rapture all the time, the catching up. We shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. With them, that's talking about those that are resurrected. So this is a simultaneous event, okay? The resurrection takes place and the rapture is immediately following. To meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words, Okay. So this is, the, this is really the next step on the, on the Lord's um, end time calendar. There's n- really nothing else has to take place in order for this event uh, to kick in. So at any moment that trump of God would sound, the, re- the resurrection followed immediately by the rapture. So timing-wise, this is what we're. This is really what we are waiting for. Um, the um, um, the timing, of course, of Christ first, and then us. Daniel chap- I wrote down there Daniel, Daniel chapter twelve, and we've already read that. And that, of course, is speaking about Old Testament saints. And if you remember from what we read in Daniel chapter twelve and verse number two in particular, it is talking about at the end of the tribulation. So the Old Testament saints are not resurrected at the same time that we who are in, please notice again, we were in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. It says those that have died in Christ. That's an important phrase. Old Testament saints did not die in Christ. I'm not saying they didn't have faith in the Messiah, but I'm just saying they didn't die in Christ. We did. And so their resurrection takes place at the end of the tribulation because what they're, what they're, we are, during this age that we're living in, we are delivered from the wrath to come. This is, here's the tribulation. You're in the mid-trib right there, sitting right in that pew. This is the tribulation right here, okay? And we are delivered from the wrath to come. The gen, we're Gentiles, right? So this is all leading up to this period of time. We are raptured. This, those that have died prior to the 
to Christ's coming, Old Testament saints, their anticipation is over here at the end of the seven years of tribulation. They are resurrected and then brought right into the kingdom. And, and so that's why Daniel chapter 12 locks in their resurrection at the end of that great tribulation. So they're, resur they're resurrected and brought into the kingdom. We are resurrected and raptured to deliver us from the wrath to come. It, it happens simultaneously at the beginning of the tribulation. Um, it's a tr pre-tribulational rapture. And I know there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of stuff that goes on, a lot of discussion about that. People that believe in mid-trib, um, the pre-wrath pre it's, it's called nowadays, uh, Revelation chapter 6. And then, of course, post-tribulation, those that think that the, you know, the church is going to go through the tribulation. And um, anyway, we talked about that a couple years ago. We went through our eschatology um, uh, class, um, Sunday school. Um, but the timing is the fact that, um, that believers are going to be brought into this great reward. Now, I want you, if you would, please go with me to Revelation chapter 20. Because we do have to mention that there is uh, the timing for the resurrection of the unjust. <clears throat> we mentioned that in verse number, um, in chapter 20, verse number 5, uh, the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. And he's talking about, of course, that there's a period there. And then this is the first resurrection is mentioned, blessed and holy are they that have part in the first resurrection. So that phrase, this is the first resurrection, is talking about the first ones that are mentioned prior to those Second one's there. Um, I wish they would have put the verse break right there at that period instead of the next phrase. But um, I didn't. They, nobody asked me. So um, the, the second type of resurrection happens at the end of the thousand years. So seven years of tribulation, a thousand years of millennial kingdom, and then there's another resurrection. And so this is resurrection, of course, are those that are going to be mentioned starting in verse number 11. And I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it and those from uh, whose face the earth and heaven fled away and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead small and great stand before God. And the books were opened and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which are written in the book according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life. Now, that book was the same book that's mentioned all the way back in Daniel chapter 12. So it really hasn't changed, okay? So like I said, like I said this, isn't, this isn't New Testament doctrine. It's Old Testament doctrine. They were found, uh, the, book, uh, the book of life were cast in the lake of fire. And, and so the, um, uh, the timing as far as this is concerned is the fact that the saints of God have already been resurrected and already have been brought into the reward that God has promised. And at the end of the tribulation period, we go through a thousand years of millennial kingdom and then another resurrection takes place. And that's the resurrection of the unjust, the resurrection unto damnation. And um, then they are cast in the lake of fire. They are alive because we're, we're told as we talk about these resurrections, there's, there's a change that takes place. Uh, that doesn't mean only a change for the, uh, for, the, for the saved. Everyone, everyone is changed. They have a resurrected body, which means they have a body that will never die. But they, those that are unjust, uh, they will experience the pain of the lake of fire for all of eternity. So, one last portion of scripture, because I'd rather end on a happy note, and that's John chapter 14. 
and a great statement that's made in John 14. Beginning in verse number 19, Jesus says this, Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. Now, what he's talking, this is, of course, just as John 14, the, the crucifixion hasn't happened yet, certainly and not the resurrection. So he's talking about something in the future. And um, he's talking about the, you know, the steps, the de- his death, burial, resurrection, and ultimately his ascension into heaven. He, he knows these things are going to take place. The world's not going to see me anymore. But you see me because... And he makes this statement, because I live, ye shall live also. So when he makes a statement concerning because I live, he is not talking about, he's not saying because I'm alive right now, you're going to be alive too. He, he's talking about something in the future. He's talking about his resurrection. Because I'm going to, I'm going to experience this change, this resurrection from the dead, you also are going to have the same resurrection. This is the great promise that we have from the Lord Jesus Christ that we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the last trump of God. And then he, uh, if you would please, that next verse in verse number 20, he says, At that day ye shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you. It'll all make sense. It'll all be more real than we could ever imagine it to be. The moment of the resurrection, we will see and um, experience more than we could ever imagine or know from even reading the Word of God. Um, To experience that change, to experience the presence of Jesus Christ, and to experience the knowledge of the complete fulfillment of all the promises that God has ever made in an instant. It'll all be so real. I believe in the resurrection of the dead. I believe that Jesus Christ has experienced it. And I believe that he has made us a promise that one day the trump of God will sound and we shall all be changed. Let's pray. Father, I just want to thank you. What a great and precious promise you've extended uh, to us through your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, because of what Christ has done, that we can have this promise of eternal life, waiting for that day that Jesus Christ will return for us. It will be caught up. Or we'll be resurrected. And Father, until that day that we would be faithful to carry out your work, and to provide the opportunities, Lord, through the preaching of the gospel for others to share in this great and precious promise also. Lord, one day, Jesus was come, will come. And until that day, Lord, that we would be found faithful. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.